walk in the woods, camping, crocheting, painting, gardening, uh, do-it-yourself <coughs> projects. Those are the people that you would resonate with and you want to maybe find a couple of groups because you want to be able to have time to be active in those types of groups that you can join if you don't already, if you're not already a member of those types of groups. And then depending on what your offer is, if it's health and wellness, you may want to join health and well, a couple of health and wellness groups where you can see what the admins of those groups are doing in their group to help their members. Um, for example, I've been in essential oils and so I had joined a couple of essential oil groups, but you gotta be really, really careful because you wanna make sure you understand the rules before you join the group and make sure that you don't violate the rules. One of the groups that I was in, they talk about essential oils, but they don't, they don't allow you to talk about your company if you happen to sell the product. So you have to be really, really careful. And then um, you want to try to be the expert, be considered the go-to person. If someone's making a comment about, you know, what did you do when something, something happened in your life and you come back with your personal experience? You're not sharing a specific company, but you're sharing your experience and results that you may have gotten from a specific product, whether it be a coffee or a um, skincare regime or a specific foods. Like, for example, I always suffered a lot of inflammation in my right ankle that I broke in 1991 several years ago. So I stopped sodas. I don't drink sodas anymore and the inflammation went away. And some people that are in health and wellness are aware of specific foods that cause inflammation. And if they're aware of it, then they can share that tip. You know, you know what? I discovered that tomatoes is probably the worst thing for someone that has arthritic pain. And I used to have arthritis pain really, really bad in my hands. And when I gave up tomatoes, it went away or it was reduced or whatever the results were. So now you're looking at the, the people in the group are looking at you, at you as kind of a, like a, somebody who just kind of knows a little bit of something, number one, because of experience. So the other thing that you would want to do is, again, if you're in my group, go to the advertising group list that's in the um, one of the announcements in the group. And you're free to open it up. You're free to put it on your Google Drive if you want to. You can have it to work if you want to. Or you're free to just come back to the group to pick it up whenever you want it. But I recommend that people just go ahead and open it up and you can put it on your Google Drive and have it for your purposes. So this is the how-to group. Facebook's going to let me move in here. Uh, I don't remember if I left it here or if I took it down and put it into the guides. But yeah, Facebook's been at this group. I don't know. I think there's something wrong with my group. I've had a lot of trouble with that group for some reason. I don't know. It's weird. So here's the how to group and under the announcements, <clears throat> here is the cheat sheet. So you would just click on it and you can open it in Google Drive and save it in your Google Drive so you always have access to it so that you can go and pick a, and what I highly recommend is pick a group that has a lot of members, one, 2,000 and above, but try, if you can, go to the ones that have 35, 40,000, 50,000, 20,000, 10,000 if you can because those are tend to be the more active groups. Now, one of our members said that he was gonna download this and he was gonna go through it and check to see which groups are no longer active, which groups have changed in their counts and which groups are still open. And I'm, I don't know if he's gonna fix it and send it back to us or not, but you know, I said, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So I don't know, I'm just waiting to see. And that was our friend here, Brian. So he said that he was going to do that. So we'll see. That would be very helpful. So that, that would be 
right now I know there's a lot of groups that, um, yeah. You, and, and you'll wanna make sure that you record which ones. Like you could take that, uh, that file and actually use it as a template to mark off the groups that you know are no longer active and mark them down, you know, so you don't go back to them again. But anyway, the other thing that you wanna do is go up here into the Facebook search box and type in a code word such as, let's say that you're in health and wellness and um, smoothies is really a, um, a popular process that people use to help with their diet, to help them get on a healthier plane. Juicing is another one that a lot of them like to do. So you could just go in and use some of those words and search like juicing. There's juicing groups, juicing recipes, juicing for health, juicing vegetables, juicing for weight loss. And you're gonna, it's gonna take time for you to build up a base of groups that you would want to put in your portfolio for you to be working. So here's juicing groups, because you can also do this on business pages. And as you can see, there's Um, a lot of groups, Facebook's changing this all the time as to what you can and can't see when you're searching for items. We've got Reboot with Joe Cross, Juicing and Changing Your Life. He's got 45,000 members. This is a private group. You'd have to join it, and it may be a group that actually uses his product, so you might have a hard time getting in. Here's another one. That's a private group. Then you've got this one, Juicing Recipes Raw Organic. That is a public group. You could go ahead and go to that one and see if it's something that you would be interested in being connected to. But because it's a public group, you can actually go there. And the thing with public groups is you can see content and you can see the members. You just can't like and you can't comment. So you don't actually have to join some of these groups if you wanted to get some practice on prospecting in these groups and then decide if it's something that you could maybe provide great value with whatever it is that you're doing. Now, this is 2020 posts, so it doesn't look like there's a lot of activity, recent activity. It looks like it's almost been a year since people have actually been doing anything in here, which seems quite interesting to me. So that would be one that we'd probably put on our list. Now, April 28th, uh, let's see, that's 20. Okay, here's a, here's a more, okay. So here's April 28th, 2021. So if you look at this group, do you guys see what I'm seeing? Here's an announcement, Stephanie Day. So she's talking about don't spam, you know, advertising and spam. So you got to read the rules, so on and so But you're you don't even not even a member. And then you got new activity. New activity. This is from September 2020, which tells me somebody has posted something under that 2020 post recently. So if you go down here, you see Lorena Kelly, she posted a link four days ago. You see that? So by going to a group and checking the first couple of posts and looking at the dates does not necessarily mean this is a no active group. Because as you all know, people will like a post and comment, even if it's a year old, it pushes it back up to the top. Okay. Now this one here, this is from October 2020. She's asking, where's everybody from? There's 177 comments. So that means new people are coming into this group and they're answering that question. Here's one 14 hours ago. Here's one five hours ago. And again, here, another one, the best juicer machines and why. So somebody has commented recently, which pushes that old post up. But I would go to a more recent post, like this is from April of this year. And this is Nicholas Davino studied at Pace University. 
you can go down here and you can see this person's main profile. And what you want to do is right click with your mouse and open her profile in a separate window so you're not leaving the group. And then go over to her profile. And what you're going to see is sometimes you will see content that she had posted from that group. So you got to be real careful to make sure that you're actually on her personal profile. So I'm going to hit the three little dots and it looks like I am on her personal profile. She says Pace University, Cliffside Park High School. That doesn't tell me what state, what country she's in. And the last post on her page is October of last year. So she, you know, she's locked down. You can't like, you can't comment, which is okay. But you put her on your list. Okay. Then you can go back to that group and go to the next one. Now, look at this. Even though you're not a member of this group, you can still like the post, which is incredible. So we're going to go down here and see who, what the comments are. Wendy Pearson, where do you get these bottles? She said Amazon. Looks delicious. Thank you. And here's a portable blender that Amazon has that you can use to make your smoothies on the run. So what you can do is Nicholas is the creator. Wendy has asked a question. So let's go look at her personal profile. Now, when we before we go there, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to stay on that page. Before we go there, because you can actually kind of get a bird's eye view if you're using a computer. Now, I'm not sure. You can go a little bit faster if you're on a phone when you're doing this because it'll take you over to their profile and then it'll come right back to the group when you're done. But that's not the case with the computer. So we can go down here to her um, comment. I want that April comment. Whoa, that thing's crazy. That opened way up. <laughs> All right. So let's just say Cynthia Anderson, she loves it. So we put your, your mouse over her picture and it should pop up with you giving you kind of a bird's eye view. She lives in Vancouver, British Columbia. If you're able to sell in Canada, it might be a viable prospect. That's about all that that tells us. So we can right click, open the link and go over to her uh, personal profile, see if she's locked down. And we're getting, this is her personal profile and it's got Canada, Canada, they're talking, she's talking about Canada better get rid of these losers. Okay, so it's kind of a negative, negative content. Uh, she was evidently in Paris. That's incredible. So you could, you could like and you could comment on her um, Paris trip. And just, you know, oh, wow, you're so blessed. You know, I've, I've always wanted to go to Paris. I've never been able to live that dream. And this is uh, something she's trying to sell. And this is a decorative mirror. She's trying to sell that, it looks like. So um, there's not a whole lot of content here, but you get the idea. You just take time, go through, find three things you can like and comment on one of the three things if you can. And again, you want to be careful because if the people's posts contain a lot of negativity, you don't want to attract negative people to you. So I would very, I would recommend staying away from that type of a person's content. And then down here, we've got recipes. That's a public group, private, private, private. Here's a juice fasting, healthy living. That's a public group, 3,400 members. And again, you can um, go through the posts, see if, if you're in the health and wellness industry, 
see if there's anything that do you resonate with. And then um, the other thing that you can do is actually just click on the members tab. And just kind of scroll through. And again, just put your cursor near their name. And as you see, there's no profile photo. This person's in the Philippines, but their friend button is available. So they do accept friends. This person does not. This one here, you can't see too much, but it looks like a new mom and she's got a button. You could check that page and see if there's anything there that you could comment and like on. And this one here. So if you do it this way, it kind of can go a little bit faster for you because that way you automatically know if they're open to accepting new friends or not. Because if you're trying to connect with someone who won't even accept a new friend, you're kind of stuck. So like this one, she says she's an assistant teacher at Building Blocks Daycare Center. She lives in Wisconsin. She's on a health and wellness group, so she's probably interested in health and wellness. And if that's your industry, it may be a viable prospect for you to desire to connect with. <clears throat> and let's see. A lot of videos it looks like I can like doesn't look like I can comment I can like so if there's something here you know that I resonate with this one here you know I can just you know do a wow or something I love this this scenery this is beautiful and so on and so forth. So that's some of the ways that you can prospect using groups. Now, if you wanted to go to, uh, let's say, um, juicing pages, or if you wanted to go to an influencers page, like Eric Warhe, depending on your industry, if you're network marketing, depending on whatever industry. And then over here, we've picked juicing and we want pages. Then go down here on the left and just pick the flag. That'll take you to pages. And you can go and look at the uh, posts. And here there's 1,500 people that have liked and reacted to this post. And you can see this person's open to friends. So you can go and just kind of uh, hold your cursor over her name. She's a project manager of Reinforcement Earth Company. She lives in Florida. Uh, you can message her and she's accepting friends or you can follow, well, that's the other one. So we could right click, open her up into a new page, go over to her personal profile and engage with that person. And um, a lot of times, yeah, it looks like she's locked down too. She just changed her personal profile. You can't even like on her page. So that would not be a good one either. But it's, that's just the way that this, it's just the nature of the beast, finding people to talk to and uh, keeping track of where you've been and what you're doing. And if you can find 10 people during your travels, you've got 10 people to talk to. And it does help. It helps give you people to talk to. Let me see if I got any notes in the chat here. Nope, nothing in the chat. Okay, so has that been beneficial or is there anything specific that you'd like a little bit more on um, or problems that you have run into when you've tried prospecting this way? I haven't tried it, but that sounds interesting. I made posts on the various groups, but I've never actually contacted any of the people that yeah, you're, um, yeah. But when you say contact Mary, Marianne, what I'm saying is 
you go to their profile if they're not locked down you like their posts you don't really contact them you're just on their profile engaging with content okay and then what they'll do is they'll see you were there and that they liked you know that you commented if you can comment on their content they'll respond thank you so much and they're going to check out your profile okay and they're going to come over to your page and they're going to send you a friend request so you don't ask them for a friend no you do not do that you do not know you do not add them as a friend you don't message them during this process no you're just showing up as somebody new they're going to recognize that so they're taking action okay because if if they're not interested in learning about you then you haven't wasted your time by connecting on their profile okay. by sending a friend request that's going to be rejected by putting yourself in front of Facebook as a spammer and possibly ending up in Facebook jail. I don't want that. No, like so it's, it's kind of like you're going through the reverse engineering part of it. Yeah. You're showing up on their profile liking and commenting so they're taking attention because somebody new showed up okay and they're going to send you a friend request now here's the second step you've been doing some prospecting now you have friend requests now what do you do okay okay i'm going to share my screen again And I am going to go over to my friends list. I did a little bit of prospecting this morning. And I'm going to go to my friends list. And I'm going to go to friend requests. friend requests and if you have your bell turned on your notifications when people send you a friend request you may see that in your notifications I'll close some of these windows so facebook doesn't take up all my bandwidth so if you see over here i've got 58 friend requests okay now, this is, uh, I don't just go through here and confirm. I actually go to their profile. So I'm going to click on her profile because I'm going to check to see if I had responded previously. So I'm going to check Messenger. And I don't know who she is. Um, I don't know that I connected with her. I'm going to just kind of scroll through here since this is a recent request to see if I liked and commented on anything. And I don't see anything. And I'm going to also check to see what does she do. So she is a CEO of the 2.0 master class, which is being held June 1st through the 4th. And I might have registered for this. I don't remember. So what I would do is I would send her a private message and say, thank you so much for the friend request. Just curious about why you're reaching out to me. But I'm not going to do that with her because I've got to check to see because I did sign up for um, some training and I'm not sure if she's in charge of it or not. But here we got this Anders Ferry. I'm going to check out him and I'm going to check messenger and I have not sent him a message. He's a friend of Permich, which is also in the six step sponsoring sequence. It looks like he is a friend of Amanda's. He's a friend of Gavin's. So it's very strong that uh, he has sent me a request because Gavin's group, six, six Step Sponsoring Group, does a Friend Monday thing where he says, okay, it's something Monday, you know, who's ready to take on new friends? And I'll put in there, 
I am always looking for new friends, but PM me. And I won't take a friend request if they have not private messaged me, unless it's somebody that I'm working. And he has not sent me a friend request. The other thing is, I think he's in Sweden and his posts are all in Swedish. So I'm not going to accept it because I wouldn't understand a word they're saying. It's not going to be beneficial to me. I'm not going to delete it because he'll just come back later and ask to be my friend again. So I just leave it sitting there. The same thing with this Chris Barlow. Um, but with Chris, I think what I did with her was I actually did send her a message. Close this, go to message. And I said, oh, I, it was, so it was a, a photo in a story, I think, that she did of a skincare lotion that is a bronzer. And I just, I said, wow, you know, she had like the leg not done and the leg done. And I just said, wow, that's incredible coverage. Because I commented, she sent me this, which I think is part of what Amy struggles with is when she's connecting with people is right away, they're talking about their opportunity. And so she's got, uh, I'm so glad you saw my post. This tanner is a bronze colored gel. And she's telling me about this tanner. Okay. That's not what I, that's not why I, I just, I was, uh, yeah, it's great coverage. Now, the proper way of her doing this would have been for her to respond in Messenger from her stories that says, thank you so much for liking my story. I love this product. If you're interested in more information, feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to share it with you. That's very generic, very open, non-threatening, and will weed out the people that are not interested because I'm not interested. She's wasted her time doing this, but she's also sent me a friend request. I would not send a friend request because someone liked my story. I would just say, you know, thank you so much for liking my story. I really appreciate it. I hope you got great value or something like that. So she's kind of a prime example of how not to prospect because she got a reaction from somebody. She's got to develop that relationship first. Now, which would have been smart for her would be to go to my profile like and comment on some of my content. And then maybe I would want to friend request her, but probably not because I don't normally friend request. It's very rare that I do that. And then we got Josephine Hanna over here. And this is part of prospecting guys. When I talk about prospecting, I'm not talking about getting in front of new people all the time. It's working the people that you would love to be in front of. So she sent me a friend request and I'm going to go to Messenger. And I said, hey, Josephine, thank you for the friend request. Just out of curiosity, how did you find me? I see you are connected to Joy. Love Joy. She's amazing. Talk soon, Coach Marjean. She's not responded. So that tells me that Facebook has put me in front of her because I know Joy. We have mutual friends. So Facebook says, you may know this person. And rather than go to find out if they know that person, they just hit the friend request button. It's annoying. It's very annoying. But here's the deal. If you hit delete the friend request, chances are they're going to come back again. So I like to leave these here because I know I worked her. I know I've sent her a message. Now, maybe it's going to be, this was uh, February 21st. Here it is, May, and she's still not responded. So I couldn't be too terribly important to her. Then here's another one, Tarina. And I'm going to check messages. Hey, Teresa or Trina, I see you sent me a friend request. Just curious how you find me. What do you need? She's not responded. And that was in January. So that kind of kind of helps. I hope it helps you guys to figure out. Sorry, I'm just trying to move this thing out of my way. 
um, how to work your friends list when you do have people over here in your friends request section and why I have a lot of people sitting here that are still sitting here. Now, if I find one like this one, Nat Makey or Nate Ma Mackey, um, he's uh, self-employed, he's in Alberta, Canada, or maybe even in Austria. That's, that's hard to say, Australia, he's from Australia. Uh, he's got just photos here of him. He's got two mutual friends. I, I don't know for sure. Oh, I know Eamon. I know Eamon's 4%, I think. And um, I see if I send him a, friend, a message. Probably not, because I don't feel good about this one. I don't see any reason why I want to be his friend, why he'd want to be my friend, except possibly one of those, you know, spammer guys. So I'll hit the three little dots and I'll block him. I don't see of any interest whatsoever. And that way he can't send me a friend request ever again. Okay. So that's what you want to do. If you know for a fact that you don't want to be this person's friend, there's nothing about this person that interests you, but you don't want them to continually come back asking to be your friend. Now here, this guy's a seven figure business maker. Uh, we have 14 mutual friends. I'm going to check out who we're friends with. And it says no friends to show. So normally, you know, if it tells you you're, you've got personal friends that we're friends together of, it'll tell you who they are. But I don't see that. Anna Thompson. See, and that's all it'll show me. He's got, uh, this is where, you know, this, this little section in here, for me, it, I used to have like these nine photos. I don't have that anymore. All I have is my um, story photos. It's the only thing that even shows up over there anymore. So here's sometimes practical kills values. Here's what I mean. I mean, he might be, he won't be a viable prospect for me. So I would just as soon not connect with him. Now, if he's got his follow button on, I can follow him. And then I'll delete the friend request. So now I can see what he's doing. He'll be able to see what I'm doing, but he's not on my friends list. So he's not impacting.